The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... says the Chinese proverb, is worth 10,000 words. But to whom? That is always the question. It's all a matter of supply and demand. It could also be a matter of who is looking and who is listening. Actually, there are times when we are not so sure but that one word isn't worth 10,000 pictures. Now look, Molly. You wouldn't shoot me. I thought I meant something to you. I thought you and I... The things we said to each other. Killing me won't change anything. I'm pleading with you. Oh, you're begging now. I'll give you as much mercy as you gave me. But I didn't kill you. What do you mean you didn't kill me? I'll show you how it feels to be dead. <laughs> mystery drama, The Talking Women, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Ed Ames. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Frittered away by details, said Henry David Thoreau. Well, while we have every regard and respect for Mr. Thoreau's wisdom, on this particular issue, we must regretfully disagree. Details, the minute, the almost insignificant details, these can often be woven into a rope to hang the guilty or rescue the innocent as any homicide detective could tell you. But not just now. Our homicide has not occurred yet. But it will, before you know it. The Bayswells, Robert and Martha, are at dinner. Another cup of coffee, Robert. Uh, no, dear. (laughs) That's good. You should start cutting down. Well, uh... Oh, not just for your health, either. It's... It's the only way we can move those prices out of the stratosphere, don't you think? The fact is, I don't have time. You don't have time to think? I don't have time to do anything else because I have to go to New York. You have to go to New York? When? Now, actually, I have to make that 8 o'clock plane. Oh, oh, why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to ruin our dinner. The whole thing came up out of thin air just a few minutes before I left the office. I I know how you hate to travel, Robert, but if you're going to make the 8 o'clock, I'd better pack your overnight bag and get ready to drive you to the airport. Mr. Parsons asked me to go. Bob, I want you to go check out that situation in the New York office. What situation? I don't know, but there's always some kind of situation, and it can be solved, so he thinks, by what he calls a headquarters presence at the scene of the crime. Crime? What crime? Oh, it's just his way of talking. In other words, my being there will make people toe the mark. Oh, well, if you're going to make that eight o'clock... I don't want to go to New York. You know what I should do? Quit that job. (laughs) How can I quit? We have a mortgage, two cars, insurance, a profit-sharing setup, a bonus arrangement, an equity and a pension plan. Who was it that said... We don't own our possessions. They own us. All right, dear. Now, how long will you be staying? I don't know. A couple of days. Oh, well, I'll pack three shirts. I wish I didn't have to go. Darling, it's obviously something we must learn to live with. Yes, it's Bobby. Oh, Bobby. 
Where were you last night? I called you when I got in. Oh, oh I, I, I went to see my mother. Did you? Oh, Bobby, baby. You should have told me you were coming into town. I guess I should have. It's just, I, I didn't know. It was a sudden thing. I just decided on the spur of the moment. Oh, Bobby, baby, we'll make up for it. I spent the night alone. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have to come to New York to do that. But we'll make up for it. I'll see you this evening. Oh, Unless, of course, you have other plans. Oh, Bobby, baby, don't talk that way. Goodbye, Lolly. Oh, what do you expect? Oh, no, sorry, Corby, it's just the funniest fella. I mean, we can die laughing at him on the TV, but here on a nightclub. Oh, oh, what's the matter, Bobby? What's the matter? Something's wrong, Bobby. What makes you say that? Oh, I don't know. You just seem to be so far away. I'm right here at the table. Oh, you're still sore about last night. Last night is gone. Forgotten. It's already become part of the past. I know you're sore at me. I pay for your apartment. I expect you to be there. Oh, hey. Here's a smartest looking couple in the club. How about a picture? Oh, sure. No, thank you. Oh, for two and a half bucks, I can make you look like Romeo and Juliet. I have already said no, thank you. But more is required. Oh, well, pardon me. Oh, well, why didn't you let her take the picture? I don't want one. Well, suppose I do. Suppose we don't discuss it. Oh, oh, okay. I think we've been here long enough. Bobby, if, if I did anything wrong... It's time to leave. Oh, you're mad. I know it. Oh, don't start that. I can tell. You're mad. Now cut it out. I, I can't help it. You're so terrible. Now stop that, I said. I'll be right back. Hello? Oh. Hello? Oh, come on. Things can't be that bad. No, but there's a word. Mm, yeah. Hey, uh, you see the sign on the door of this place? Ladies' lounge? <laughs> it should reveal a tears. <laughs> Is it the old story? What old story? Well, the oldest story in the world. It's going to ditch you. Yes. Oh. He's the whole good looking one, huh? With the head just starting to get a little bit of pepper and salt. Very distant gay. Yes. The one who didn't want the picture. Listen, you want something to remember him by? I took it anyhow. It's all over. Finish. Ah, uh, there's other fish in the sea. Not for me. He, he came into town last night. I wasn't home. Mm, he's mad, huh? Oh, but it's an excuse. Why? Well, look at me. Well, you look okay. I look close. Well, you still look okay. The lines. I'm getting some lines I never had before. Ah, all of us are. And under the chin. It's starting to sag a little bit. I'm getting older. Who is it? Those teeth, you don't like it. Oh, come on, you're still cute. I thought he would be the one. Which one? The one I'd get older with. The one I, I would settle down with. You mean he's not my Oh, yeah, but he still needs somebody like me. I like what I used to be just a little while ago. <laughs> tired of me. Are you sure? Oh, I know it. For the way he looks at other girls and never we're out. Well, you can't blame a guy for work. I know. It's the way he looks. So, last night I wasn't home and wouldn't you know last night is the night he was picked to come into town? Ah, uh, always the case. I should have been home, but I'm running scared. I was out with a guy. Uh-oh. Was that smart? I need somebody. I, I don't have too much money. I have to have somebody to take care of me. I wanted to be ready when he walks out. Now, the very first thing you got to do is cheer up. It isn't fair. I've been to him five years, five of my best years. I was as close to him as his wife. Close to him. He told me things I bet I bet he never told her. That's all part of it, honey. See, I had a boyfriend once, and he was very educated. Oh, the way he would talk. You know, when girls like you and me, back in ancient Greece, you know what we used to be called? Hatiri. 
And you know what that means? No, talk to the women. That's because in addition to everything else, we were the only kind of women they could really talk to. You know, you know, afterwards. Well, he just can't walk out on me. I won't let him. Well, how are you going to stop? I'll stop him. Nobody should be treated the way I've been treated. Look, you want the picture? No. Hey, you don't bite my head off. I know exactly what I have to do. Hmm? Well, I hope so. Goodbye. I, I enjoyed talking to you. Oh. Now, there's a thing. Somebody should keep an eye on. I must say, you almost made a spectacle of yourself tonight in that club. You... You want a drink? After all, a man in my position. Should, should I make it something to eat? No. Well, what do you want to do? Sit here and lecture me about how big a nothing I am? I think it's time you adopted an adult's point of view. Oh, yeah. I know what that means. Do you? Mm-hmm. It means you're nerving yourself up to tell me we're finished. Now, Lolly. Now, Lolly, what? I, I wish you were more sober. I'm sober enough. You could understand better. Understand what better? This is how things work out. The only word I heard is out. And that's where I am. Out. Just like that. No, it's not just like that. Relationships run their course. Oh, sure. You're a grown woman. You should understand that. Well, what happens to me? What would have happened to you if we'd never met? The lease on the flat runs two more years. I'll see that you can pay it. In addition, I'll give you a sum of money that should tide you over. Is that all you can say to me? What more is there to be said? Why don't you talk to me, Bobby? About what? About anything. Everything. Nothing. Oh, how we used to talk to each other. Hours and hours. It's all gone, too, isn't it? Let's not make this thing more difficult than it has to be. Well, for you, it isn't difficult at all. It's just like firing an employee for your company. <laughs> I'm even getting my, my severance pay. Molly, you've been around. Oh, sure. You're a very attractive woman. Oh, see, you just said it. Oh, when we first met, you said I was an attractive girl. Now, for the first time, I'm an attractive woman. My age is showing, isn't it, Bobby? I, uh, I have to get to the airport. Yeah, that's how it's going to be. You'll walk out of here and it's as if the last five years never happened. I'll think about you from time to time, Molly. And if you should ever need any help. Who is she? 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 Your new girlfriend. For your information, there's no one else. Oh, sure. I realize now that I'm in love with my wife. And she suspects. Oh, is that so? She doesn't know that yet. She only suspects subconsciously. That's why I have to stop now, because she would walk out on me. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe I ought to tell her. You're not that kind, Lolly. And besides, that's why I'm giving you the money. Oh, money buys it all, huh? Doesn't it? Ordinarily. But this time, it's different. I, I love you, Bobby. Now, Lori. I'm not good, but I, I can't help it. I never gave you any ground. Oh, shut up. Where are you going? Where am I put it? What are you looking for? Here it is. Lolly. Lolly, what's that? You mean... You don't know a revolver when you see one? Well, yes, I I can see it's a revolver, but what are you going to do with it? You're so smart. And you mean to tell me you don't know what a person does with a revolver? simple a question as you can find to end and act with. And so what is our tableau? 
we have handsome, dignified Robert Baswell standing perfectly still and holding his breath. And we have angry, distraught Lolly holding a 38 caliber in a non too steady hand. The question that was posed will be answered shortly when I shall return with Act Two. that said, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. It could also be said that the hand that holds a revolver is the hand that controls your world, especially if that revolver is being pointed in your direction, which is precisely the situation that our friend Robert Bayswell happens to find himself in. Bobby, you're not going to shoot me. I should. Why? Why? Oh, that's the whole thing. You can stand there and ask why. I thought I... I meant something to you. That you and me, we would be different. That the things we said to each other were... I, I, I'm sorry, Lolly. Oh, don't be. It's enough that I'm sorry. Lolly, killing me won't solve anything. I know that. It won't change anything. It's true. That's why I'm not going to do it. Then what are you going to do with that gun? Oh, I... I'm going to kill myself. Lolly, no. Why? What do you care? This is just some hysterical self-dramatizing. I know what I'm doing. Don't talk like that. We used to talk all the time, didn't we, Bobby? Lolly. We used to talk about everything. All those long, long hours together. That's what I'm going to miss. Molly, you can't change what is. Maybe you can't change it. But you can leave it. But you mustn't kill yourself. Oh, yes, Bobby, I must. I, I want to die now. Molly. No, no, don't come close to me. Don't try to stop me. I want to die now. Quit when you're ahead. Get up from the table while you're still hungry. You know what I'm talking about? No. Yes, you do. I don't want to become old and bitter and lonely. One of those women who look like winter. Dead and frozen. Wally, just put the gun down. I don't like this world. Why should I want to live where a girl like me can fall in love with someone like you? Someone who has no heart, no feelings. I'm sorry. I'm the one who's going to pull the trigger, but you're the one who's killed me. You're the one who took away all the joy I'll ever have. Because of your hell on the list. Molly. No, no, stay back. Get away from me. Let go of the gun. Get your hands off me. Don't be crazy. Let me alone. Oh, oh, oh. Molly. Molly. Julie Thomas. That's me. I'm Sergeant DeLuca Homicide. Mm, wow. Uh, you're the photographer in this club, hmm? Elementary, my dear Watson, since I'm carrying this camera. You've got a great future as a detective. Now, let's step inside here, hmm? into the manager's office, where it's quiet. Ooh. <laughs> What'd you have in mind? <laughs> Let's sit down. Oh, yes, sir. Sherlock, sir. Uh, did you know a girl named Lolly Harbison? No, sir. Or uh, maybe you knew her by her full name, Dolores Harperson. Mm, no, sir. Uh, we have reason to believe she was in the club last night. Yeah? She took an ashtray home with her. And your boss says it's a new kind that he only started putting on the tables last night. So she had to be here. Oh, I get it. You want it because she swipes an ashtray. No, I want to find out about her because she's dead. Oh. She was shot last night. In her apartment. No, I, I don't know anyone by that name. Uh, she had this portrait of herself in her home. Does she look familiar? Mm. Well. Did you see anyone who looked like this? And could you remember who she might have been with? 
Oh, the thing gets so mobbed, it's hard to remember. Yeah, it must have been really mobbed in here. Neither does anyone else remember her. Sorry, Sherlock. Wish I could be of more help. If you should happen to remember, let me know. Hmm? Here's my card. Oh, sure thing. Uh, hey, where do you think it took place? Well, she was a quiet girl, lived alone. Last night, somebody came into her place and shot her. Oh. Nobody seemed to know much about her. It's a quiet building. Nobody seemed to remember any friends coming or going. Oh, lots of people like that in the city side. You know, with fish to come to go without a trace. Look, are you sure she was married? Sure, I'm sure. What else could it have been? Hmm, suicide, maybe. What makes you say that? Well, she was... Well, that is, she may have been depressed. Yeah? How would you know? Oh, I live alone too, son. All by myself. You know, sometimes it gets to you. You just get a case of the blues and it gets so dark. You just... Well, you just want to end it all. She didn't end it herself. Can you be sure? There was a struggle. Besides, a right-handed girl wouldn't reach all the way around and hold the gun under the left side of her ribs. Mm. If you should happen to remember anything... Or think of something. Oh, sure, Sergeant. Glad to help out. Martha? Oh, Robert, you're home. Why didn't you call from the airport? I would have gone out. I met uh, Joe Dowling at the airport. He he, he gave me a lift. Oh, that was nice of him. (laughs) You hungry, dear? Uh, No. I I have something on the plane. Tired. A little bit. Well, how is New York? About the same. Did you do anything exciting, unusual? Not really. Oh. Well, how about something to drink? I think I'll fix myself a martini. Join me? A weak one. Well, I, I've come to a definite conclusion. Yes? From now on, no more of this continuous travel. Oh? Yes, I am through with it. Are you? And if Parsons keeps insisting, he can just take the job and, well, he can have my resignation. Oh, Robert. Johnny, do you mean that? Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> How happy you've just made me feel. How happy I feel myself. Oh, you don't know how I've longed to hear you say that. How I hated those trips of yours. Well, why didn't you ever put your foot down? Well, it, it had to be your decision. I'm glad you finally made it. Let's drink to it. Oh, all right. Here's to Robert stay-at-home Basewell. For him, no longer the urgent and sudden summons. No longer shall he stare forth into the dark and lonely night. No more the silence of strange rooms. No more cold discomfort of strange beds. No more the impersonal, meaningless politeness of waiters, waitresses, cab drivers, hotel clerks. I give you the new Robert Basewell, the man who has decided to finally to say no. Here, here. Uh, who could that be? Oh, probably the Nesters. They want us to come over and play bridge. Now, how, how do you feel about it? Uh, how do you feel about it? <laughs> I can take it or leave it. I would just like to be along with you tonight. Good. I'll make up an excuse. Hello. Long distance calling, Mr. Robert Baswell. Oh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Robert. Long distance. Now, who could that be? I hope it's not some situation in New York again. Believe me, my dear, all those situations will henceforth and starting with now have to handle themselves. Hello? Julie. Who? Julie. I'm the girl with the camera in the nightclub. Uh, yes. Uh, what's it about? It's about where do you want to spend the rest of your life? What does that mean? I know you're the one that killed that girl. So, you're not saying a word. I want to see you. Well, what, uh, what is there I can do? You have to convince me why I shouldn't go to the cops. Oh. And it is 
crucial. Pick me up at the club at midnight. Tonight. Tonight? Mm -hmm. I already looked up your plane schedule. You can make an 8 o'clock to get you there in plenty of time. Well. Well, what? Look, I made up my mind. I'm going to get to talk to someone tonight. Who's it going to be? You or the cops? Bye, honey. What is it, Robert? It's a situation. I've never seen you so pale. It's a very serious problem. Oh, and you have to go to New York? Tonight. Tonight? There's no way out of it. But it isn't fair. After all those brave words. Well, you have to go. I suppose I'll... Oh, please. Don't be so self-sacrificing, so understanding. Maybe, uh... Maybe what? Maybe if you'd... If you'd have... Yes? Oh, I don't know. If, if you'd have just objected a little more. Oh, darling. I'm sorry. I, I thought I was doing the right thing. Oh, Martha, I'm sorry, too. It's... It's just that this development has me so upset. I have to go. But I promise you, this will be for the last time. The absolutely last time. <laughs> in mind. Well, she knows our hero is rich. She knows he's handsome. And she also knows what she knows, which happens to be something the police do not know so far. We'll have a wider distribution of this knowledge when I arrive here with Act 3 shortly. papers, said Mr. Will Rogers. In that case, he would join the rest of the world in being ignorant of the facts concerning the death of Miss Lolly Hardison. Actually, only two people at this point are aware of how poor Lolly came to her untimely end. First, there's Mr. Robert Bayswell, who is on the scene, and second, we have Miss Julie Palmer, who has made an extremely shrewd and educated guest. And we have placed both of them in the same room for your convenience. How about it, Kent? If you don't mind, I'd rather we got down to business. Oh, good. Well, yesterday, detectives asked me if I'd seen a young lady named Lolly Harbison in the club the night before. Not only if I'd seen her, but also if I could remember the guy she was with. Uh, if any. And, uh, what did you tell the detective? I was about to say, sure, I remember both her and the guy real well. Matter of fact, it was on the tip of my tongue. But you see, my mother once told me, never say the first thing that comes into your head. <laughs> Good advice, no? What did you tell him? You see, I used to date this college professor. Oh, you don't believe it. Well, I, I didn't say I didn't. Yeah, but you got this look, which is how could this city blonde go out with a college professor? Look, what do you want from me? He said this prop that everything is a commodity, and therefore it's got its price. You know what I mean? I think so. So this cop says to me, did I see this Lolly Hobbison in the club? And he says to myself, what's he going to give me for that information? It's got to be worth something. I can lead him straight to the guy that killed her. He gets a promotion, a raise in pay, and what do I get? I get the satisfaction of knowing I did my duty as a citizen. But can I deposit that in the bank and write checks against it? Now, what do you think? More important is, what do you think? I think 
You should make me an offer. To do what? To keep my mouth shut. But I don't think you understand. I didn't kill her. You didn't? No. You see, she... She wanted to commit suicide. She did? I tried to take the gun away from her and... And? And it went off. Oh. Oh, is that what happened? Yes. Oh, I see. It's the truth. Well, then, see who goes to cop? The police. For sure. They want to know what happened. Yes, but the poor girl, she's... She's dead, isn't she? Oh, she sure is. It's not going to change anything. It, it won't help her. But the cops are unhappy. We got a murder. But it wasn't a murder. It was an accident. Oh, whatever. They have to keep the record straight. So why don't you go down and explain it? I can't explain it. Why? Because I have to explain what I was doing in her apartment. Oh, you'd be surprised how broad-minded the cops are. They wouldn't care why you were in her apartment. But my wife would. Hmm. Well, I admit, you got a problem. And you know perfectly well the police wouldn't believe I was trying to stop her from suicide. I admit it doesn't get better. How, how could you uh, prove I was there with her? Well, if you didn't believe I could prove it, why did you come flying back here? Well, I, I, I may have panicked. Yes, and now that I think of it, nobody knows about Lolly and me. Nobody. Nobody can prove a thing. It's only your word against mine. Oh, the lot. I got you nailed to the wall. What makes you think so? I've got this. What? What when, is that? What do you think? A picture of the two of you at the club. Now, see here, I told you specifically not to snap that. Great picture, huh? Oh, so you tore it up. Now, what is the good of that? <laughs> you think I don't have the negative? <sighs> yes, you probably do. So, you want to be sensible? Sensible? Well, I got a pretty good idea what you can afford. So, I think I'm going to hit you up for an annuity. Annuity? Yeah. For the one all my life and never could get. Security. I got a picture that ties you in with Lolly Harbison. A picture taken the night she was killed. So you think you can blackmail me? Oh, now that is not a nice word. What makes you think you can get away with this? You can afford me. I'm not going to sip you clean. I just want a couple of bucks a year. Pay the rent, buy some clothes, a little sip now and then. I see. Those are very modest demands. I am a very modest little lady. Ask anybody. Which tells me something. What? You're in this alone. For sure. What would I want with a partner? Only you know about that picture. That's right. It's me, myself, and I. Which means if something should happen to you, no one else would know about it. Well... If something should happen to you... Why should anything happen to me? Something has to happen to you. Hey, look. When you see how easy it is to extort money from me, oh, as time goes on, you want no, more no, no, and I, more. I, I, I was just, Why I was should just, I permit myself to be at your no, mercy? No, all, all I want is just a couple of dollars. There's only one way to deal no, with blackmail. No, Stamp it out at once. No, no, at the no, root. no, don't. Listen, please. I listen. have to do this. You, you don't have to do anything. We can forget the whole thing. I'm very sorry. I don't have any choice. You, you, you can't shoot me. It'll be hard. No, no, no I, not this. I came prepared. There'll just be a little pop. The silencer cuts out most of the sound. Just a little pop, like opening a bottle of champagne. I, I'm sorry. Really sorry. And now I'm through with it. Never again. Never again, as long as I live, will I ever step over that line. Good 
Morning, Sergeant Atherton. Mind if I come in? Morning to you, Sergeant DeLuca. I understand this is your murder. Mm, Billy Palmer. Mm. Know anything about her? Yeah, I spoke to her the day before yesterday. Why? Connection with my murder. The Lolly Harbison thing. Still a line, of course. The Lolly was in the club the night she was killed. She was with a guy. How do you know? Would a girl like Lolly go to a nightclub alone? Well, since the guy hasn't come forward, we have to assume he wants himself kept out of it. Mm, yeah, for a good reason. But where did my Julie Palmer meet up with your Lolly Hobbison? Well, according to Julie, they didn't. Julie claims she didn't see Lolly in the club that night. Would Julie lie, Sergeant DeLuca? Yeah. And if she did, you and I could be working on the same case. You find anything around here? Mm, print people who are blind so far. What's in the wastebaskets? I don't know. Well, let's look. Meanwhile, tell me, how did my murder cross with yours? It starts at the nightclub. Lolly and this guy go there. Then they go home to her place. The guy kills her. Why? When we get our hands on him, we'll find out. How do you bring Julie into it? Julie takes pictures of people in the club. Mm. Nightclubs are filled with twosomes. Many are married, but not to each other. Now, maybe Julie has a little racket going for herself. Oh. She sees a likely looking couple, figures there just might be a little hanky panky taking place, so she snaps their picture. And now she's got something to use on the guy's wife or the woman's husband. Uh, what's that torn up stuff? Hmm. Looks like a torn up photograph. Let's see if we can put it together. Mm. She could have taken a picture of the Harbison girl and the man she was with. Mm, she could have at that. Now, she hears about Lolly Harbison's murder, and she realizes this time she has struck pay dirt. Mm. So, she tries to blackmail the guy. But he won't stand for it. Mm. And he kills her. Yeah. She <laughs> waves the picture at him. So, he shoots her dead and tears it up, and he throws it in the wastebasket. No, 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 he wouldn't. It could even be this picture here. No, I can't. Well, let's keep working on it. You'll see. He wouldn't be that. <laughs> that, that what? Stupid, careless? This guy isn't a professional killer. He doesn't make complicated, sophisticated plans. He's more of a trapped animal. He's up against it. He rips the thing up and gets rid of it. Well, it's obviously a shot taken in a club. Well, I told you. A man, a woman, at a table. A woman. Mm-hmm. That's Lolly Harbison. Hmm. We have a portrait of her. But the man she's with? No. Who, who, who's the man? Uh, he could be anybody. This is going to be a rough one. No, wait a minute. I think there may be a way we can track him down. Oh. Well, figure this fellow was from out of town. Mm-hmm. He's probably here on business. Right. Which means he's on an expense account. Oh, he probably is a credit card. Good. Let's check the names of all the guys who signed tabs that night for a party of two. Mm-hmm. Then we print a couple of hundred pictures of this guy. We send them out to the town to the cardholders and ask the local cops if this is the guy. Yeah, yeah, but there's only one thing. Mm-hmm. Suppose the guy paid cash. Then we wouldn't have an address. Then what? Then I guess there's a great chance he's going to get away with it. Mr. Parsons? Uh, yes. Uh, sit down, Bob. Uh, yes, sir. Bob, you've been making a lot of trips to New York. Yes, sir. I think they need the reminder that headquarters is looking over their shoulder. Well, Davis is a good man. He's got some capable people under him. Yes, sir. It's just that... Uh, what's your name, Bob? I beg your pardon. Uh, sir. Look, Bob. Your expense account is all out of line. Mr. Parsons, I do find it necessary to entertain a great deal while I'm... Bob, I know the drill. The controller has been sending me your credit card billing. You know, Frank, he hates to spend a dime on entertainment. Bob, if you want to entertain your lady friends, use your own money. But, sir, I assure I'm you... I'm older than you, and I've been through it. You've got yourself a nice little wife there. You know your job. 
You've got a bright future here. Whoever that girl is in New York, get her out of your system. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble. Now, that's my final word on the subject. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I understand, and I appreciate it. I, uh, I had a showdown with Parsons. Oh, what do you mean? I told him. I said, look, I said, I've had it. The traveling, the airplanes, the hotels, this not being able to call my life my own, I just laid it on the line. Oh, dear. I hope you didn't alienate him. That wasn't my first consideration. This thing has been eroding our married life. Robert, dear, I wouldn't say that. It's true. What kind of life has it been for us this past five years or so? We could never plan. But what did Mr. Parsons say? He said I was right. Oh, oh, darling. Just because you're not a demanding woman, does that mean you should be taken advantage of? No, darling. No more of those trips. New York will have to sink or swim without me. Oh, I'm so happy. You finally asserted yourself. It was overdue. And we'll never be separated again. Hey, who could that be? I don't know. I'm not expecting anyone. I'll see who it is. Yes? Uh, Mr. Robert Bayswell? Oh, yeah, I can see you, Mr. Robert Bayswell. I'm a homicide detective from New York City. My name is Sergeant James DeLuca. My identification. Yes. Well, uh, what do you want with me? Well, now, for the do-it-yourselfers in our audience, here is an opportunity for you to write the end of our story. Remember, the very next thing Sergeant DeLuca must do is read Robert his rights. Please make sure of that. Otherwise, Robert will beat this thing in court. Then DeLuca will explain about the picture and ask Robert to accompany him back to New York. You don't have to mess with the expedition procedures as there won't be any problem with that. Okay. Then the trial for two killings. Then the sentence. Life, don't you think? And the moral. Well, let that wait until I return shortly. We promised you a moral. If you want to get away with murder, think small. What brought down poor Robert Bayswell? Little things. If he burned the picture, carried it away with him, or done anything but tear it up and leave it in the wastebasket. Even so, he'd never have been caught if he paid his nightclub tabs with his own money instead of charging them to his company. Well, Robert is only one of many murderers who get it here regularly. Our cast included Ed Ames, Bryna Rayburn, Evie Juster, and Sam Gray. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The Fountain of Youth, if I am rightly informed, is situated in the southern part of the Floridian Peninsula, not far from Lake Macaco. Its source is overshadowed by several gigantic magnolias, which, though numberless centuries old, has been kept fresh as violets by the virtues of this wonderful water. An acquaintance of mine has sent me what you see in the picture. Ah, oh, all this is very interesting, if true, Doctor, but what may be the effect of this fluid on people? That, my dear Colonel, you shall judge for yourself, for that is why I have asked you here today. I should like you all of you, to partake of this liquid that I may observe the degree of its potency upon the human frame. 
Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.